Icosanoids, formation and function. Are you able to name the three subclasses of icosanoids? Well, don't worry if you can't. We'll be addressing this question and much more in this Chalk Talk episode. Icosanoids are a group of hormones belonging to the local hormones, which are sometimes called tissue hormones. In contrast to classical hormones, local hormones aren't synthesized in endocrine glands and transported to the target site, but are produced directly within the tissue. This is facilitated by a fatty acid that is present in almost all cell membranes called arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid gives rise to three major classes of icosanoids, prostaglandins, thromboxins, and leukotrienes. The advantage of these local hormones is that they're rapidly produced in various tissue types depending on demand and cell type. However, although icosanoids constitute a large number of similar hormones, they can exert different effects depending on the organ they're produced in. So, in this Chalk Talk episode, we'll give you a step-by-step -step guide on the formation and function of icosanoids. Icosanoid synthesis begins with fatty acids from the cell membrane. The most important of these fatty acids is arachidonic acid. On the one hand, prostaglandin H2 is synthesized from arachidonic acid, which is the starting point for the synthesis of other prostaglandins and thromboxins. On the other hand, arachidonic acid also gives rise to leukotriene A4, from which additional leukotrienes are formed. Let's go more in depth and look at some examples of important icosanoids. In this episode, we won't be including prostaglandins A, C, D, and F, but we'll focus on prostaglandin E2. In addition to the previously mentioned prostaglandins, there's also prostaglandin I2. Since prostaglandin I2 acts as thromboxin's antagonist, a substance counteracting the effects of another substance, it's often differentiated from the other prostaglandins and has even been assigned a different name, prostacyclin. So that's why we've assigned it with a box of its own in this image. The most important compound in the thromboxin family is thromboxin A2, shown here on the right. Leukotriene A4 gives rise to leukotrienes B4 to E4. Okay, that completes our summary chart of the icosanoids. Let's now take a closer look at the enzymes involved in their formation. We'll start again with arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is released on demand from the cell membrane. The most important enzyme involved in this process is phospholipase A2, in short, PLA2. Let's have a detailed look at its function. You can see a schematic representation of a phospholipid at the top, whereas the bottom image shows the molecular structure of a phospholipid. PLA2 cleaves arachidonic acid from the phospholipid in the biomembrane, setting it free for other reactions. Actually, stating that icosanoids are synthesized from arachidonic acid, as we've done so far, is merely an example. It would be more precise to say that icosanoids are formed from fatty acids that are 20 carbon atoms in length. By the way, this explains the origin of their name. Icos is a Greek word and means 20. In addition, the fatty acid must be unsaturated. Unsaturated means that not all carbon atoms carry the maximum number of hydrogen atoms, but form double bonds. Three to five such double bonds are required to synthesize icosanoids. The most common and therefore important representative of this type of fatty acid is arachidonic acid, which has four double bonds. Okay, let's go back to icosanoid synthesis. The released arachidonic acid is converted to prostaglandin H2. The key enzyme involved in this conversion is cyclooxygenase. Let's explore the reaction in more detail to understand the origin of the name cyclooxygenase. The prefix cyclo indicates that the enzyme cyclizes arachidonic acid. That is, it converts part of the molecule to a closed ring. In its function as an oxygenase, it incorporates oxygen into the molecule. There are two isoforms of cyclooxygenase, cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2, also termed COX-1 and COX-2. So why is this important to remember? Isoenzymes catalyze the same reaction but differ slightly in their structure. 
These minor structural differences enable some drugs to selectively influence COX-2, but not COX-1. This may be desirable, as COX-1 and COX-2 have different biological functions. COX-1 is present in almost all cell types and is constantly active, whereas COX-2 is only expressed under certain conditions such as an inflammatory response. In analogy to the left side of this image, there's also an oxygenase present on the right side of the image that uses arachidonic acid as a substrate. The enzyme is lipoxygenase, in short, LOX. Let's also look at this reaction in detail. Lipoxygenase catalyzes the reaction of arachidonic acid to leukotriene A4. The name lipoxygenase indicates that the enzyme is capable of oxygenating fatty acids or lipids. In contrast to COX, oxygen is incorporated into the molecule without forming a cyclic structure. Okay, so that should wrap things up on the most important enzymes involved in icosanoid formation. Before we move on to the physiological roles of the different icosanoids, we should address one last aspect regarding terminology. Have you ever asked yourself what the letters and numbers in the names of the icosanoids symbolize? The letters indicate different functional groups in the ring. The subscript at the end of the name stands for the number of carbon double bonds in the molecule. Prostaglandins and thromboxins, which are metabolites of arachidonic acid, have two double bonds. Therefore, they're easily identified by the subscript 2. In contrast, leukotrienes, which are also formed from arachidonic acid, have four double bonds, as indicated by the subscript 4 on the name leukotriene. Three of these four double bonds are conjugated, which means they're separated by a single bond. This gives rise to the suffix triene in leukotriene. By the way, the prefix leuco implies that they're formed by leukocytes, or in other words, white blood cells. Don't worry if these structural forms appear complex. The most important thing to remember is that the compounds are quite similar. Let's use the prostaglandins E2 and F2 as an example. They differ in the functional groups on the ring, shown here in red. Prostaglandin E2 has a ketone on its ring, which is an oxygen atom forming a double bond to a carbon atom. In prostaglandin F2, this oxygen atom is part of a hydroxyl group and forms a single bond to a carbon atom. These subtle differences between the various prostaglandins result in the frequent overlap in their effects, which has been widely discussed in the literature. In the next slide, we'll summarize the most important functions of icosanoids. As icosanoids are local hormones, it's important to consider their physiological effect depending on the organ they're formed in. Let's start with prostaglandin E2 and a selection of its effects. One very important function is the involvement of prostaglandin E2 as a mediator of pain and the inflammatory response. This effect is due to the binding of prostaglandin E2 to free nerve endings called nociceptors, which register pain signals. Prostaglandin E2 is also produced in the hypothalamus in response to chemical messengers released during an inflammatory response. Therefore, prostaglandins increase the body's core temperature, inducing fever. However, prostaglandins are also important for the function of several organs. In the stomach, prostaglandin E2 has a protective effect by facilitating mucus production. In the kidney, it causes vasodilation, leading to increased renal blood flow, abbreviated here as RBF. Prostaglandin E2 is also formed in the uterus and stimulates uterine smooth muscle contraction with increasing gestational age. Furthermore, prostaglandin E2 is also formed in the prostate and released in seminal fluid, where it increases sperm motility. This actually gave rise to the name prostaglandin, as these hormones were first isolated from seminal fluid, which is produced in the prostate gland. Now, let's move on to prostacyclin. One of the sites of prostacyclin synthesis is in the epithelium of blood vessels, where they have a vasodilatory effect and inhibit platelet aggregation. Therefore, both functions are important in regulating coagulation, in which prostacyclin has an important antagonist, thromboxin A2. Thromboxin A2 is released by activated platelets, resulting in vasoconstriction and platelet aggregation. Accordingly, the origin of the name thromboxin can be traced back to its synthesis in platelets, which are also termed thrombocytes. Leukotrienes also have various effects on the body. Leukotriene B4, for example, 
is synthesized by immune cells, especially neutrophils, to attract other immune cells, indicating that it has a chemotactic effect. Leukotrienes C4, D4, and E4 are also synthesized in immune cells, especially by eosinophils. In the lung, they lead to airway narrowing or bronchoconstriction. This is clinically relevant because excess production of leukotrienes can result in an asthma attack. Yet, the bronchoconstrictive effect of leukotrienes can be reduced by blocking the receptors of leukotrienes C4, D4, and E4 on target cells. The drug Montelukast and other leukotriene antagonists, ending with leukast, are used to block the actions of leukotrienes. Okay, up to this point, we've introduced you to the most important eicosanoids and explained their functions. The exciting thing about this subject is that eicosanoids are also used in daily clinical practice. For example, in gynecology during labor induction and in pediatrics to keep the ductus arteriosus open. Further information can be found in our library. But first, let's go to the quiz. In this episode, we looked at arachidonic acid metabolism. Were you able to remember all of the different substances? Arrange the arachidonic acid metabolites on the left side to the boxes in the pedigree chart. Good luck! Thank you.